Often when I speak, the press want to talk about the tragedy of the day. They want to talk about terrorism. They want to talk about weapons of mass destruction. They want to talk about emerging infections. So one reporter one day made a mistake in a room filled like this and said to me, Surgeon General, what's the most pressing issue before you today? I said, obesity. And I said to them, they said, why do you say that? I said, because obesity is the terror within. The nation got a report card on obesity today, and the country flunked. The battle against obesity has been going on for years. One in three children in this country is overweight or obese. Shouldn't be so hard to get them to run around and play, right? They have voracious appetites and they don't exercise enough. The message has been pushed on us. It's your fault, you fat. America is facing a major health crisis. Britain is too fat and is getting fat, and doing nothing is not an option. Their sickest patients are those under 60 who are obese. It's predicted that obesity is going to become our biggest health problem and it's going to overtake smoking and smoking related diseases. It's that big. This country is getting fatter. People are dying from avoidable diseases caused by obesity, such as diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. Diabetes was a virtually non-existent disease in the 19th century. Even in the United States, the estimates of the percentage of the population that were diabetic was roughly, you know, one in 10,000. Today, it's one in 11. In 1980, the diabetes epidemic started in earnest, and it continues through today. And it's all because of the change in our diet from real food to processed food, low fat processed food, high sugar processed food. There are 600,000 food items in America. 80% of them have added sugar. We are humans living in most cases in what we call a very toxic food environment, an environment of highly palatable, very processed foods that keep us addicted and interested in those foods and serve us a huge number of calories without making us feel full. I feel imprisoned by food. I feel like it's got a control over me that I can't seem to get out of. Food addictions are so common today that people aren't even aware they're addicted. 99% of diets don't work. Sugar isn't health food, but the idea that that's the whole problem with the diet is really not correct. Hi, my name's Brooke, and I'm 12 years old, and I'm going, I'm going to have liposuction. At just 12 years old, Brooke Bates says liposuction was her only hope in a battle of persistent weight problem. My goodness, my goodness, doing this at 12. I'm going wrong somewhere, and I just don't know where. I eat healthy things. I don't understand why I've got an eight stone. It's literally like carrying a human being on my back. I go to the gym and I give it like 110%. I come out and I'm absolutely sweating, yet I'm still overweight. What else could I do? I just don't know. To try to blame a broken metabolism or overconsumption of calories or menopause or I have a knee injury and I'm not working out anymore or I used to work out and I'm not working out anymore. I'm not saying those don't have contributions, but they're not the main problem. It's these micronutrients, iron, vitamins, magnesium, and all that. A new trend in wellness is to screen for nutritional deficiencies. Low levels are linked to several medical conditions. If I could deliver one message to the researchers who are looking for the cause of diabetes and the cause of clogged arteries and the cause of high blood pressure and the cause of obesity, I would tell them the answer's in three words. It's the... What you are looking at here are pictures of Coney Island Beach in Brooklyn, New York in the 1960s. Notice how skinny everyone was. Notice how there's not a fat person in sight. And sure, back then there were some fat people here and there, but obesity was the exception, not the rule. Now look at that same beach today. Yeah, it's bad. So that begs the question, what changed between 1960 and now? Why does it seem like it's so much easier to get fatter today? Fat bastard. And if you are overweight, why does it seem impossible to lose that fat no matter how much you diet and exercise? While at the same time, it seems like every single disease and disorder is on the rise. Is it because fat people consume that many more calories than the rest of us? Well, as it turns out, no. 
happy and, hand. And I, I gotta else. tell you, I, I know we we love to we love to beat up on fat people. Mm. We love to turn it into a character defect. But I gotta tell you, virtually every fat person that I know or that I've taken care of, they are not disproportionately eating more than their peers. In some cases, yes. And yet, for some reason, no matter how hard they diet, no matter how much they exercise, no matter how healthy they eat, they can never seem to lose any weight. So it says, how do you work out every day and have a belly? It doesn't add up. And then she flops over her hands, revealing her belly that lumps forward. And then the caption states, I've been swimming almost daily for swim teams, plus eating well. And surprise, I still have a belly. Why? Mainstream fitness and diet gurus will tell you it's because of your macros. You just gotta eat gym rat meals of egg whites and rice that are completely void of nutrition for the rest of your life. And yet, when overweight people try that, it doesn't seem to work and it just leaves them miserable. Big food, big pharma, and the media will be quick to tell you that obesity isn't your fault. It's not under your control, it's genetic, it's a disease. In case no one has told you this, you do not have to lose weight to be healthy. You do not have to lose weight to be fit. You do not have to be thinner to live a fulfilling life. You do not have to track your calories every day. That is not bad. We are not just fat people. We are people. These are my arms. These are the arms that I have. It's not my problem that you don't want to look at them. Let's all gain 300 pounds and be fat. Fitness does not grant you a better life. I do not owe you fitness. I am fat and beautiful and I am worth every bit of space that I take up. But the truth is that none of that is the case. Macros are just one tiny aspect of overall health, not the end-all be-all. And deep down, we all know humans were not meant to be fat. None of our ancestors were fat. We're a society that's chronically fed from the time we get up in the morning until the time we go to bed. When you think about it, the only species that are obese and chronically ill are us and the pets we keep warm and fed, and they get exactly the same diseases. So why is it so hard in our modern world with all our modern advancements to lose weight? The answer lies in something that you'll never hear anyone talk about when it comes to losing weight, your hormones. Welcome to Evil Food Supply, and this is why dieting is a scam. Why is it that Americans keep getting fatter in spite of government efforts ranging from calorie posting to new school lunch program? I can say this honestly, probably 95% of America has no idea how to eat. Who taught them? Grandma? No, it's the television that's teaching them. Everybody knows that doctors don't get any really meaningful education about nutrition. The average physician in this country has less than 20 minutes of nutrition training, period. I hate to say it, but your physician probably knows less about nutrition nutrition than you do. I really still feel that it, it's 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 nearly criminal. And really fast, if you want to optimize your health, then a product that we've been really loving is called Levels. Today's sponsor Levels is an app that allows you to track your blood sugar in real time, and over 50,000 people have used it to get real results. And why would you want to track your blood sugar if you're not a diabetic? Because whenever you eat foods that spike your blood sugar, that's when you get food comas. That's when you spike your insulin. And insulin directly tells your body to store fat. Constantly spiking your blood sugar is also linked to things like type 2 diabetes, obesity, heart disease, stroke, dementia, and infertility. Which means if you want more vitality, track your blood sugar. And the best way to do that is with levels. Levels uses a continuous glucose monitor that you attach to your arm. And with this combo, you're able to see how different foods spike your blood sugar in real time. So you know what foods to keep and what foods to cut out. And a ton of people have used it to lose a lot of weight. We love it because now we know that, hey, I know this food is gonna make me tired because I see it clear as day in the graph. So I'm gonna avoid it. And getting started is easy. Just go to levels.link slash EFS with the link below and pick a sensor. We recommend the Dexcom one. And then, once you get everything in the mail, follow the setup guide to attach the sensor to your arm. At first, it feels like a pinch, but then you won't even feel that it's there. And that's it. They'll send you extra sensors to replace them every 10 to 14 days. And even if you don't plan on wearing this forever, we recommend everyone give it a try at least for a month so you can test the foods and drinks you eat regularly. So go to levels.link slash EFS today by scrolling down and clicking the link below.
Hormones are by far the most powerful chemical compounds inside your body, and oftentimes, they are at the root of most of our health problems. If your hormones are optimized, you'll be healthy, you'll have high energy, you won't be tired all the time. But if your hormones are out of whack, it can cause all sorts of trouble, from low sex drive, to fatigue, to being tired all the time, to hair loss, infertility, anxiety, and depression. And what do you know? One of the things that can happen if your hormones are messed up is not being able to lose weight. And yet, if hormones are at the top of most of our health problems, why doesn't anyone ever talk about hormones or even care to explain what they are? Think of hormones as chemical messengers. They ride all around your body through your bloodstream and they attach to cells, telling them to produce more of this or to produce less of that. Or hey, get rid of our fat in our cells or increase the fat in our cells. So in that sense, obesity is not under your control. It's under your hormones control. Your weight and how much fat you have is regulated first and foremost by your hormones. Your hormones are the base of the pyramid, which means you can diet and exercise as much as you want, but if your hormones are messed up, it's not gonna matter. So if you want to lose weight, fix your hormones first. There are many hormones, but the hormones that matter the most when it comes to losing weight are insulin, cortisol, and ghrelin. Insulin directly tells your body to start storing fat. Here's how it works. Whenever you eat carbs or protein, insulin is released into your bloodstream, which signals to your brain, hey, let's store all this food we're eating into fat. And it doesn't really matter how much carbs or protein you eat. You could eat one tiny bit of cake, and this signal from insulin to store fat will still go off. But it's not just carbs and protein that raise insulin levels. Cortisol, which is a hormone released when you're stressed out, can also cause insulin to rise. So if you're always stressed out, your insulin is going to be high no matter what you're eating. And then there's ghrelin, another hormone that controls weight loss. Ghrelin is known as the hunger hormone because it makes us hungry. When we haven't eaten in a while, ghrelin is released into our blood, and it returns to lower levels once we do eat so we don't eat that extra ice cream sundae. But here's the thing, it's that this hormone can only be satisfied by eating whole natural foods. Nutrient void foods like starches and sugars don't have the raw ingredients to activate this hormone. This is the thing with natural foods, is that they have natural satiety mechanisms. Why do you think you can eat bags upon bags of hot Cheeto fries and never feel full from it? This is why it's so easy to overeat on fake foods. So if you go to the buffet and you eat like a lot, like way too much, and then you try and eat a couple more um, pork chops, it's like, you'll never do it. You yeah. can't do it. You can't force the pork chop down. But if you're to eat some cookie, you could easily do that. We've always been told that if we just eat less calories, we'll lose weight. But look around. Food companies have been pushing low calorie and fat free snacks for decades, and yet, there's more obesity now than ever. Those tiny calorie controlled bags of baked Doritos are actually not doing us any favors. So maybe, just maybe, there's a lot more to weight loss and health than just counting calories and fearing fats. Counting calories simply does not work at all. And people will say, oh, but it does, it does, it does. Well, if you look at the scientific studies, it does. The only way to really lose weight and go back to the naturally slim physiques of our ancestors is to fix our hormones, specifically our insulin and ghrelin. And how do we fix them? Remember how we said hormones are chemical messengers? Well, if our hormones are made up of chemicals, then we better be eating enough of those chemicals. What you have to understand about hormones is that they are made up of micronutrients, things like magnesium, vitamin A, iron, and thiamine. These micronutrients are what make your hormones hum. Again, hormones are literally made of these things. So if you're lacking in any of these nutrients, your hormones won't be able to do their job. Think of it like you're trying to build a house, but you're low on bricks and wood. So you make do with what you have and build your house out of cardboard. That is the state most people's hormones are in. They're eating so much, but what they're eating is void of any of the micronutrients they need. So their hormones like insulin and ghrelin get completely out of whack. This is also why simply focusing on macros, like how much protein, carbs, and fats you eat, is not gonna do anything unless you first attack what you're deficient in. And you might be thinking to yourself, but I'm pretty healthy. There's no way I can be deficient in anything. Well, you're probably wrong. It doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, well, or sick. 
because 92% of the population is suffering from at least one mineral or vitamin deficiency. 92%. There are many different micronutrients to worry about, but here's the thing. Everyone is deficient in different things, depending on what kind of food they eat and where they live in the world. Even your mother's nutrients levels while you were in the womb will decide what you're deficient in when you get older. If you live in the US, you probably eat foods that have been grown in sad, depleted soil. And this can cause major nutrient deficiencies. See, farmers used to do things like add compost to their soil to boost nutrient levels. But now, the commercial farmers of America just don't have time for that. They just keep reusing the same soil until that soil is completely void of every single last nutrient. But very often our food is just so nutrient deficient, right? We update the macros on the back of a lot of labels, but if you look at the micros, like how much spinach, uh, how much iron is in spinach or calcium is in spinach or how much nutrients are in the, on the label of most foods. I mean, it's a fraction of what's actually listed there. Mm. And so we're nutrient deficient. This is why simple things like tomatoes in Italy taste way more flavorful than tomatoes in the US. Oh, wow and are probably way richer in nutrients as well. Our food is a shell of its former self. In the book, The Thermo Diet, the author tells the story of an anonymous man named Jeff. Jeff was an American in his 20s that suffered from a lot of common things people suffer through today. Depression, mood swings, skin rashes, erectile dysfunction, sore muscles. When he went to the doctor to check his nutrient levels, they found that he had massively high levels of copper in his blood, along with some glaring deficiencies in zinc, magnesium, vitamin D, and B vitamins. So his doctor put him on a vitamin supplements to correct the deficiency. And almost immediately, his body started to expel the copper that was causing imbalances in his hormones. He even saw the copper physically come out of his body in the form of bright orange turds. Disgusting, but true. And just like that, all his ailments went away. That is the power of fixing what you're deficient in. And so we're nutrient deficient, right? Human beings are not as sick as we have been led to believe we are. The majority, in my opinion, of pathology and disease as we know it today are nutrient deficiencies, missing raw material in the human body. And we just accept all these things as a consequence of aging, weight gain, water retention, you know, lack of sleep, poor focus and concentration, lack of waking energy, hormone imbalance. And we think that the body has all of these different pathologies and diseases, but the truth is it's usually nutrient deficient. It's astounding what happens to human beings when you give their body the raw material that it needs to do its job. Mm. I mean, it really is. Taking the right micronutrients will mean your hormones will actually be able to do their job correctly, which will entail losing fat. And that is why you need to get tested as soon as possible. Everyone watching this documentary needs to get your blood and hair tested to find out what micronutrients you're low on so you know exactly what you need to fix your hormones. There are some at-home test kits available online, but we haven't found one we trust yet. But once we do, we'll let you know in our Evil Foods Insider newsletter that you can join with the link below. It takes less than 15 seconds. So now that you know why micronutrients are so important, what micronutrients do we actually need to fix our insulin so we lose fat? Micronutrients fall into two categories, vitamins and minerals. Vitamins are raw materials used by the body to complete very specific processes. For example, to produce serotonin, you know, so you don't have depression all the time, the body needs vitamin B6. While minerals like magnesium, zinc, and iodine are key for hormonal and nerve function. Take the thyroid gland, for example. The hormones the thyroid produces are insanely important. They do everything from regulating the body's metabolic rate to regulating its growth and development. But to make thyroid hormones, the thyroid needs iodine, a mineral. And then there's also amino acids. While not technically a micronutrient, amino acids are the building blocks of protein, and so many people are deficient in them. So whenever you eat protein, your body will take the amino acids in the protein and use it to grow and repair your body, including your muscles. This is why people who lift weights are always talking about amino acids and creatine. So when you understand this, 
that every single little process in your body depends on having enough of these nutrients? It's easy to see why a diet of sugary cereals and almond milk for breakfast, American white bread for lunch, and cheap processed pizza for dinner is gonna leave your body absolutely starved of all of these things which is gonna lead to obesity, depression, anxiety, ADHD, which just so happens to be all the terrible things most Americans suffer from. This is why you need to cut the nutrient void fake foods and opt for nutrient dense foods like red meat while supplementing for the rest of the things your body needs. But not all forms of micronutrients are created equal, especially a lot of the cheap supplements that are peddled. with all the vitamins kids need. Remember Flintstone vitamins? Parents all over America would pop these candy-colored pills into their children's mouths, assuming they're getting a complete dose of essential nutrients. I mean, that's what it said on the label. But what the whole country didn't know about these vitamins is that the form of the vitamin matters. Plant-based synthetic vitamin powders, like the kind you find in those cheap drugstore brands, are in no way comparable to vitamins found in real food. They might even do more harm than good. Plant-based vitamin A supplements can actually block thyroid function and cause you to gain weight, while animal-based vitamin A supports the thyroid. Plant-based vitamin A is also 20 times less bioavailable than the vitamin A you would get from animal foods. Bioavailability means how easily does a substance become completely available to its intended destination once you consume it. You'll find this pattern with pretty much every vitamin out there, and that is why you want to avoid multivitamins. So what are the two biggest vitamin deficiencies in the US? This probably won't surprise you, but it's vitamin D3 and B12. Plants don't produce vitamin D3, only meat and the sun do. So when you think about how America has been eating a grain-based diet since the 70s, as per the food pyramid's rules, it's no wonder everyone is so low in the essential vitamin. Add in the fact that people spend almost their entire day working in an office completely shielded from the sun, and it's all starting to make sense. One study showed that 80 to 90% of obese people have a vitamin D deficiency. And another showed that if Americans had enough vitamin D, we would cut national healthcare costs by 25%. Peter Attia recommends that we get 400 to 600 micrograms or 15,000 to 24,000 IU of D3 per day. Just standing in the sun on a bright summer's day for 20 minutes will give you that amount of vitamin D3. But if you don't get sun where you are, load up on animal foods. Butter, eggs, liver, shrimp, and crab all have high amounts of D3. And once again, you want to get your D3 from animal sources, not plants. Those synthetic plant-based vitamin D2 supplements have actually been linked to disorders like hyperactivity and heart disease. And since it's from plants, it probably won't even get absorbed nearly as well. So we've taken care of vitamin D. Now for the next big deficiency, B12. This is another vitamin that can only be found in animal foods, which is why vegans and vegetarians are always freaking out over getting enough B12. Yes, vegans are at a greater risk of getting a B12 deficiency than the rest of the population. So they absolutely should take B12 supplements. But it's not just vegans who are low in this. Because of the grain-based American diet and our depleted soil, 39% of Americans are now low in B12. And when you're low in B12, you will feel horrible. You'll be tired all the time. You'll have numbness in your hands and feet. Low B12 is even being linked to Alzheimer's disease. We used to get B12 naturally from our bacteria-rich soil, but now we need to get it from animal foods like liver, kidney, meat, fish, oysters, clams, mussels, milk, and eggs. But vitamins are just one piece of the puzzle. Minerals. They keep us hydrated. They balance our blood sugar. They can even heal wounds. Our hair, nails, teeth, and bones are literally made of minerals. But just like vitamins, we've become super low in them. And it's all because of, you guessed it, industrial farming. 
Before the Industrial Age, Americans got plenty of minerals from their animal-based diets and from eating local produce grown in mineral-rich soil. But when farmers started abandoning their slower, traditional farms for the more economical factory farms, mineral levels in Americans started to drop. Now, over half the U.S. is deficient in essential minerals. And the main deficiencies that tend to show up on this side of the world is iodine and magnesium. Iodine deficiency is a huge problem right now. Over 2 billion people worldwide are dangerously low of it. And having low iodine can cause thyroid problems, mental retardation in children, low IQ, and irreversible brain damage. One government agency even called iodine deficiency as the greatest cause of preventable mental impairment in the world. Documentary on this coming soon. The problem with iodine is that it's only found in high amounts in soil, seaweed, and seafood. And we know that soil is no longer rich in minerals. So if you don't live near an ocean or don't eat seaweed or seafood on a regular basis, you're gonna be deficient. This is why people from the Appalachian region famously used to have low iodine in the 1920s, and why the US decided to fortify table salt with iodine, just to make sure everyone gets at least a little dash. It's recommended that you get at least 150 micrograms of iodine a day. A single serving of cod gives you 158 micrograms. Eight oysters will give you 160 micrograms. You can also find iodine in other foods like egg, milk, and liver. So get in that iodine. The next biggest mineral deficiency is magnesium. As of right now, about one in two Americans is deficient in magnesium, about 45%. Magnesium is key for a whole bunch of important processes in the body. It regulates blood sugar, builds bones, and supports healthy nerves. If you're tired all the time, you're depressed, anxious, maybe you get muscle twitches, it might be because you need more magnesium. Our soil used to be rich in magnesium, but as you know, this is no longer the case. This is why we need to make sure we're getting enough magnesium from foods like anchovies, sardines, mackerel, crab, oysters, cheese, and shrimp. But compared to produce grown in magnesium-rich soil, these foods usually won't be enough to reach the recommended level, which is around 400 milligrams a day. So taking a magnesium supplement, either as a transdermal spray or magnesium glycinate capsules, is usually necessary when your levels are low. Taking magnesium before bed is also a great way to improve your sleep. So we've taken care of the vitamins and minerals, but there's one more essential nutrient you'll need to include in your diet. We've all heard fitness coaches talking about how important amino acids are. The benefits of taking aminos. Again, it's recovery, sustained energy, it is uh, hydration. Amino acids are organic compounds that bind together and form protein in your body. They build hair, skin, muscles. They also support your hormones. Amino acids are the reason why some guys can build huge muscles naturally. And they're the reason why people who eat a vegan diet start noticing how much better their skin and hair looks after they eat meat again. That's because although some amino acids are made by the body, others like lysine, leucine, and threonine can only be absorbed through food. And the only foods you can get these essential amino acids from are eggs, milk, and meat. Some plant-based foods like nuts and whole grains will have these essential amino acids, but they might only have a few of them, not all nine. One simple egg contains all nine essential amino acids, but only if you eat both the yolk and the white. Cheese is also very high in amino acids because of how concentrated in protein it is. It sounds so simple to just eat more nutrient-dense food, but a lot of us have been tricked into thinking animal foods will cause disease and make us fat, even though the lack of micronutrients and amino acids in plant-based foods are exactly what's messing up everyone's hormones and thus, making them fat. But it's not just that plant-based foods tend to be void of micronutrients, it's that they also contain something called anti-nutrients. And anti-nutrients are exactly what they sound like. So you're spending all this money on supplements and good food. 
And you think you're absorbing all these nutrients, but if you're still eating things like beans, nuts, and grains, you could be blocking the nutrients from your expensive supplements and grass-fed steaks from being absorbed. See, nuts, seeds, beans, cruciferous vegetables, and the bran of grains contain something called phytic acid and goitrogens. Phytic acid and goitrogens also have a nickname, anti-nutrients. When you eat these anti-nutrients, one of two things will happen. They will either block your body from absorbing nutrients from animal foods by altering your digestion, or they will literally merge with nutrients in your bloodstream, rendering them useless. So they're basically hitching rides on nutrients you're eating and making them unusable. So even if you're eating lots of animal foods, that kale smoothie or salad you thought was healthy will literally block the micronutrients you're taking in. But not all hope is lost if you love things like hummus, like we do. If you really want to still eat grains, beans, and other plant foods, you can kill off the anti-nutrients by preparing them in the right way. There's a reason why traditional cultures soak, sprout, and even ferment grains before eating them. Think sourdough bread, or why there's pretty much no ancient culture that ate brown rice. It was always white rice, because the bran of brown rice contains phytic acid. Overcooking cruciferous vegetables like broccoli can kill off the goitrogens, and fermenting green vegetables like cabbage and kale will also make them safer to eat. What you definitely don't want to do is eat raw cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and kale. Raw cruciferous vegetables can actually block your thyroid from producing hormones, and this is going to throw your weight loss plan way off track. So what should we be eating every day to make sure we're getting all the micronutrients we need? noticed, most of the food examples we've mentioned so far are mostly animal foods. Meat, milk, eggs, seafood, cheese. It's because these are by far the most nutrient-dense foods. So that should make up a good portion of your fridge and diet. If you have enough money for organic and grass-fed, go for it. Because conventional meat, eggs, and dairy are full of hormones that will just cancel out your efforts. You'll also want to include some fruit and root vegetables in your diet. Root vegetables include potatoes, sweet potatoes, onions, carrots, and so on. Organic fruit and root vegetables are easy to digest, high in fiber, which is great for lowering insulin, and won't block nutrients like grains, beans, and leafy greens do. If you live around the Mediterranean, well then, lucky you, because the people there have been eating breads and pastas for who knows how long, and they look just fine. If you're in the US and you're able to source quality ingredients from places like Italy and France, we're all for it. But the fortified, ultra-refined flour in America that shouldn't even be considered real flour? No. Mm -mm. Nope. That is a big no-no. Get that thing away from me! Don't forget to test yourself for nutritional deficiencies through a hair test and blood test. And once you get the results back, that's when you can start supplementing. And you don't want to go for the cheapest of the cheap. We know people inside the supplement industry, and it is very sketchy. Go for the best quality you can afford. But remember to try to fix your deficiencies with real foods first. And ideally, unless you're trying to jumpstart your metabolism in the morning, or you're an athlete that needs to constantly be downing calories, stop snacking. Every time you put food in your mouth, you spike your insulin. And it doesn't matter if it's just a couple of nuts or an entire pizza. The way human nutrition is, is not that complicated. When you eat, your body wants to store food energy. Because food energy is coming in, you should store it for a time that you don't have it. And when you are not eating, then insulin falls, and you simply take that food energy that you stored and you burn it. And that's why you don't die in your sleep like every single night. It's like, yes, you don't have to eat muffins every two hours to survive. But that's the way nutrition is. So if you think about it, now we're eating sort of 10 times a day instead of three times a day. So 10 times a day, we are telling our bodies to store fat. That's why people rave about eating only one meal a day or two meals a day. Maybe that's right for you. So your fridge is stocked, you've got your supplements, but there's another factor you need to take care of. Stress. Remember, cortisol is a chemical that gets released in your body during stressful periods, and it can raise insulin. One study done at the University of California found that people with low cortisol also had lower than average body fat. So it's very important that you keep your stress levels low. You can do all the meditation, deep breathing, and exercise you want, 
But for most people, the best solution is to find a better job that you love. But that's a topic for another channel.